So our next speaker is uh, Catherine McLenahan. She's uh, an energy psychotherapist. In her work, she intuitively combines different modalities in energy medicine and energy psychology to create a healing space for clients to shift their physical and emotional blocks. Catherine is an Eden Energy Medicine Certified Practitioner and a Certified Energy Health Practitioner with extensive training in Emotional Freedom Technique, or EFT, Neuro Linguistics Programming, Energy Psychology, Therapeutic Touch, Somatic Trauma Healing, Mindfulness, and Personal Coaching. She uses a collaborative approach to explore stuckness in the energy system so that her clients' personal energy stories and wisdom and magnificence can be revealed. She is also a board member of the Canadian Association of Integrative and Energy Therapy. Welcome, Kat. Thank you, Nanda. I'm so glad to be here today. I'm always happy to help people and empower people to move from striving to thriving. And um, Okay, so Nanda's passing out sheets that we'll be doing some work together. I want to share with you some ideas that I have about anxiety and depression, it's a particular way of seeing it. Just one small part of it though. And then we're going to do a couple of tools. I'll take you through them, we'll practice them. I've saved lots of time so we can go over them a lot so that you can take them home and you can really use them a lot in your daily living. Um, so the, um, the popular idea is that anxiety and depression are emotional states, but I'd like to offer another way for you to look at them. We have... Okay, we have a lot of feelings, and you can see all the, the slides, um, and we have, there are several basic feelings, and anxiety and depression are not actual basic feelings. We have, for example, uh, sorry. anger is one of the basic feelings, and that's about creating and maintaining boundaries, and also about fairness towards ourselves and others. Boredom, and that is about the need for challenge. We need to grow and be challenged. If we're not, we're bored. And then fear, that's the need to be safe. Guilt, guilt's a little bit more complicated. It's got a few different levels to it, but it's really about fairness towards self and others. Inadequacy, that's the need to feel that we're good enough. Loneliness, that's the need to have valuable and meaningful relationships in our life. Sadness, that's about um, losing uh, very special people or things. And stress, that's about being overwhelmed by life circumstances and we don't have the resources to deal with what it is that's coming our way. So then what happens is, all of these things go into, it's like our body is sort of like a pot. And we, all these emotions come in and we become overwhelmed with them. And it's really um, quite easy to say, oh, I'm really upset with my mother-in-law, I'm upset with my, uh, my child's teacher, I'm upset about someone at work. And we blow it off and we don't think it's any big deal. But really, every time we speak, we are releasing hormones in our body. All thoughts are neuropeptides. And every time we are thinking thoughts, we are actually creating neuronal ruts that are going throughout of all of our brains. And so everything we think and everything that we're considering, it's actually having a huge impact on how our brain is being formed and how we're feeling about ourselves and therefore our way to be present in the world. So what happens is we end up with this pot and all of these emotions go into the pot. Fear, guilt, boredom, inadequacy, loneliness, sadness, stress. 
And in the plot, we're upended. We, we can't deal with all those emotions. They just build up in our body, and then we end up trying to deal with it in some way. We get overwhelmed, we get upset, we want to go and sleep, we end up going and shopping, we end up emotional eating, um, people end up doing things like driving too fast, getting really upset with all the people around them, and they get really, we get all these things building up inside of us, but then we try to push it down because in our culture we're very polite, especially Canadians. We're all incredibly polite and we don't want to say what we're upset about or what we need, what we want. We feel guilty to ask to have our needs met. And so then, we're constantly pulling ourselves back and shutting ourselves down and not expressing what we need in a positive way so that those around us can support us. And so what we do is we, we hold our feelings back and we get overwhelmed. And they often show up in addictions then because we don't know what to do with them. So, we end up, people end up drinking, you know, overeating, all sorts of things like that. And so then the next thing that happens if you can see on the slides, is we become frustrated. We have all of these things building up. We don't know what to do with them, and so we get enormously frustrated. And we are dealing with this frustration that just keeps building and building and building in our system. And we don't know what to do with it. We don't know how to move forward, and so we just get more and more frustrated. And so then it becomes... We get to the point where we go, if I don't stop this, my system is actually going to, I'm going to blow a gasket. I'm not going to be able to do anything about this, and so I might as well, I'm just going to burst at the seams. And this isn't necessarily conscious. This can often be going on an unconscious level. And but then we decide, I have to stop. Because if I don't stop, I'm simply going to become completely out of control. And so then, we go into a, the next step is we go into a depression. We go because I can't handle all of this. It's too much for me. I'm just going to stop. And I often tell people to come to see me, it's sort of like the frogs for the winter. They go into all the mud at the side of the river. And they hole up until spring comes. Well, we do the same thing when we get depressed. We hole up until we go, okay, if I can get some help, I'll come out of this, but not until then, because I simply don't know how to do this. And it becomes completely overwhelming to our systems, to us emotionally, physically, and spiritually. So then, if you can just watch the slides or the, the uh, projectors. <clears throat> then we have the feelings come in. We don't know what to do with them. They overwhelm us. Then we have all the frustration coming in and then the depression. So then, that is how I have seen so many people have come to see me. When we start unraveling and going backwards, and they'll think, well, that's that thing we're talking about, that doesn't really bother me that much. But when we actually go into some of those things that are upsetting them, but they've learned to put a lid on it, and they don't even realize how much they're holding a lid on all of those feelings. So that's what anxiety is. Anxiety is not true emotion. It is us holding a lid on top of all the emotion. And so it becomes that lid that we're holding on top of it, rather than an actual emotion. So I would like to introduce a, uh, a couple of techniques. One of them is the emotional freedom technique. And, and so we're going to go through this. Who does not have a handout, please? It, the first one looks like this. I'll put it up on the screen. Okay. <laughs> each, each person should have two handouts.
there's usually you know, one or two things that are really good to tap on it. And so I was thinking maybe pain. How many people have some kind of pain in this group? Okay, so that's, that's a pretty good one to go with. So what we're going to do is I want everyone to think about the level of pain that you have on a scale of 1 to 10. 10 is very high. 0 is absolutely nothing. So think about the number that you have that put a number to your pain. If you're in excruciating pain, go for a 10. If you have nothing, you're at a zero. And so figure it out, and then tell someone beside you. Make sure everybody gets to talk to someone and tell them what your number is for pain. Share that with someone at the table. Okay, so I want you to follow me with all of these points. And what we're doing is this is a combination of Eastern energy systems combined with Western cognitive therapy. So we're combining the two of them together. So it's a very powerful technique. And so just follow me on the side of the hand. You'll, you've got your diagrams there. You can call, follow me on so you can just look at the diagrams that you have. The side of the hand. Uh, we'll just go over the points quickly so that you can see where they all are, and then we'll do the actual tapping. We're tapping on meridian points, the ends of meridians. And then here, right at the inner edge of the eyebrow. Now, I use several fingers, so it's sometimes hard for people to see it, but it's actually technically the inner edge of the eyebrow. Has everybody got that? Okay, then the outer edge of the eye, and I think of this as like the almond uh, shape of the eye. It's like the almond has a tip to it, it's the same with our eye. And it's on the outer edge of that tip. Everybody got that? And then underneath the eye. And if you have trouble tapping, you can just do it on one side. And if you find one point that really works for you, then you can use that. And then right underneath the nose. And then right here in between the lower lip and the chin. And then the collarbone. So you just, the points of your collarbone right here where they meet in the middle. And then right, just going, just down a bit of a diagonal. And if you just use your fist, you can go like that. That pretty well gets all of them. Or you can just use fingers. <coughs> dips a little bit. You can always ask me later if you're wondering where it is. And then underneath, about four inches underneath the armpit. And then the top of the head. Now there's lots of other points, and there's, but that's kind of the basic recipe. Okay, so we're going to go through, and, and we say, um, even though I have this pain, uh, I deeply love and accept myself, because ultimately that's kind of what's the bottom, the bottom line is that often people don't accept themselves. Even though we think we do, on some level we don't always do that. Or there, there'll be a particular issue that we won't accept ourselves around. So we use this, this is basic protocol, everyone uses this all around the world that does any kind of tapping. Okay, so, so we tap about seven times. So just, and I say, I'll say the phrase and you just repeat after me. Even though I have this pain in my body, I choose to love and accept myself anyway. Even though I have this pain in my body. I choose to love and accept myself anyway. We do this three times. Even though I have this pain in my body, I choose to love and accept myself anyway. And then we start going around the body, right here at the inner edge of the eyebrow. Even though I have this pain in my body, I choose to love and accept myself anyway. Outside of the eye, this pain in my body. Underneath the eye, this pain in my body. Underneath the nose, this pain in my body. 
this pain in my body, and this pain in my body, this pain in my body, this pain in my body. Okay, so I should have asked numbers before. Uh -huh. yeah. it's, this is enormously effective. There are people that have been using this for quite a while and have achieved enormous success in healing all kinds of traumas, injuries, physical and emotional problems. It's extremely powerful. So, what are some other people I should have asked for numbers ahead of time? Anybody else care to share their numbers? Yeah, that's great. Are you surprised? Yes. Yes. People are often surprised when they use this. But our body is meant to heal. We have natural healing systems in our own body. We just have to tap into them and, and actually invite our body to open up and, and expand those places, those capacities to heal. Anyone else? I have pain in various spots in my body. One of them is not there anymore. Okay, so she just said she has pain in various spots in her body and one of them is not there anymore. Now, if I were working with you individually, we would go around and work with each one of those places where the pain is stored. And then there's often emotional memories that go along with it. And when you start working at that kind of level, it is amazing what can happen in the body. Because our body ends up being... It's kind of like a graveyard in a way because we've got all this undigested material, all these things that have happened to us, and we've never really digested them. They're unresolved, they're old issues, and there's so many times they're emotional. I've got someone coming to see me that has Crohn's disease, and it is amazing, just in a few visits, his situation is so much better than it was before. He feels so differently about himself than he did before. So, and he, and he came and he just, he was really, <coughs> feeling quite hopeless about it and thinking he could never do anything. And he's very young. So it's wonderful. He's actually living in a way that he had, could not imagine before. He, he sort of was way off there and he didn't know how he was going to get there. So it's really wonderful to work with people and see them transform before my eyes as we release some of these old images that are holding in the back, these old memories, these old events that are inside of them that actually go in and cause our body to be in a lot of pain. And we don't get the correlation. Because our body is really sneaky at hiding things. And it, it shuts things in behind us. We, we don't want to look at them because we don't know what to do with them. But this is a way to deal with those kind of things. It's very, very powerful. So has everybody gotten down? Did everybody else get down? Did everybody's numbers get down? Yes. So it'd be so wonderful if you were able to continue doing this. Because it can really help you deal with all kinds of of emotional and physical issues. Uh, you can use it to you know, tailor it to work with inflammation, to work with all kinds of uh, different problems that you have. With every particular disease, there are particular uh, aspects that show up for that disease. And so you can tailor this kind of tapping to deal with whatever it is that you're dealing with. Okay, so um, next we're going to move on to... Um, <clears throat> We're going, and also, this is really good for caregivers too because I understand there's a lot of caregivers here today. And it's really, really important for the caregivers to have the kind of attention that they need as well. Because it's frustrating as a caregiver sometimes. We have to keep giving, and it depletes, actually, in women, it depletes the oxytocin levels. So it's important to do things that restore us as caregivers when we're looking after someone who's ill. So caregivers also need this. It isn't just for people that have an illness. This is for everyone to use. With tapping, we say, use it on everything. We don't know if it works on sometimes some issue. It doesn't matter. We just try it. And one of the reasons why I do this work is because in the early 90s, I was very crippled. I, from head to foot, I was... It was really a mess. I could hardly walk. I had to use devices from the hospital to help pull my clothes on. And I was really sick. And for quite a long period of time, I mean, I still deal with some of those issues, but I used the tapping to keep, 
getting rid of more and more pieces of it. So I understand what it's like to be in pain, to be suffering, to be depressed, to be on anti, or um, I have to be on sleeping pills and that sort of thing, because it's really difficult. And to you know, give your, help yourself survive every day, and then rise and come out of that, that whole state. So I understand what it's like to have an illness. And so this is one of the reasons why I do this work. Because I knew that I was looking for somebody to help me when I was so sick. And so this is one of the reasons why I do this work. And, um, another um, technique I want to introduce you to is the homolateral repatterning. In nature, our um, energy tends to cross over a lot. Like, for example, the right side of the brain controls the left side of the body, left side of the brain controls the right side of the body, and so energy that is really healthy is always crossing over. And it was interesting to listen to Heather talk because she talked about um, people with uh, autoimmune disorders. And in energy medicine, our thinking is that when people have autoimmune disorders, their energy is not crossing over. So I didn't even realize quite when I picked this exercise that it was going to be as, as uh, pertinent as it is. So what we do is we take the energy of the body that's going kind of up and down the body. It's not crossing and it's not moving in a way that's flowing to help us because we want the two sides of the brain connecting and working together as a whole because if only one side's working, we're not as comfortable, we're not as happy, we're not as able to think as clearly. So we can actually change the way our brain works. You know when you get up in the morning and you, or you don't want to get up and you feel, oh, you feel kind of miserable and not so great. Does anybody ever feel like that in the morning? You feel not wonderful about getting out of bed? If you do this, even before getting out of bed, I've actually, the people I work with that come to me are often have spent a lot of energy trying to get well, so they're exhausted. So I've made this exercise so easy so that you can do it when you're laying in bed. So, we just have to follow along with the sheet here. We do, there's two patterns, there's A and then B. So we do A first. Now A, maybe I can take this out of here. How am I gonna do this? I can do this. Okay. So A is, we lift, the, it doesn't matter which side you start with, but lift the right fingers and the right toes of your body. Okay, then the left side. Okay, right side, left side. Right side, left side. Right side, left side. Right side, left side. And I'm hurried because Nana gave you that note. <laughs> but it's good to do one side and take it a second and then do the next side. I don't want it to be aerobic where you're going back and forth like this. It doesn't work then. Okay, so then, take a breath, and now the right fingers and the left toes. And now, left fingers, right toes. Right fingers, left toes. Left fingers, right toes. So you're crossing the energy over. We catch that energy that's not crossing over, and it's like we have to coax it, and then we cross it over. Then, so the second one, this is the B pattern, which is the crossing over pattern. And then we go back to A. Right side of the body, left side of the body. Right side, left side. 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 Take a big breath. And now cross the right fingers, left toes. Left fingers, right toes. 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 Left fingers, left fingers, right toes. Take a breath. You are made of light. Go and dance with light. And never, ever forget that you are magic on two feet. I want you to thank you all for sharing time with me today.